guys and welcome to the video and I hope that you are feeling awesome. All right, last week we went and visited this place called the Old Chancel and this week I thought we'd visit the place called St. Augustine's Church, which is literally on the opposite side of the road to this place. This church was built in 1823 and it was opened by the Bishop of Chester. There's supposed to be two graves of two famous uh, murder victims in this yard. The land where this church was erected was provided by the second Viscount Anson of Shugborough Hall. The church cost £6,501, 17 shillings and 2 deniers. Which was partially met through the sale of materials from the old chancel. But unfortunately in the late 19th century people became dissatisfied with the church. Its design had suited church services concentrating on preaching and readings. But the focal point for services had returned to the altar. A new high quality chancel at the east end of the church was proposed. This would have contained an altar and seats for the clergy and choir, which was dedicated on the 29th of June 1906 by the Bishop of Lichfield, was £4,961, 19 shillings, and 7 denarius. The Earl of Lichfield donated the building stone. A new oak pulpit was dedicated as a memorial to the Rugeley benefactress Sarah Hopkins, who provided £2,000 towards the building cost. The present chancel with its black and lady chapel, two vestries and an organ gallery was designed by Frank L. Pearson. Fortunately, guys, where I'm positioned, I can't quite see it, but there's apparently a nice stained glass window on the east side. So I'm going to try and get a, a view of this window. Wow, this is kind of hidden out of the way. Wow. That's nice colouring on that one. What we got here? You can hardly make out the writing on this one, but... This was literally tucked out the way in this area here, sort of like on the east side of the church. Guys, we can't see this window from up here, so we're going to make our way down to there. We're going to head into the um, St. Augustine's field to hopefully get a better view of this window. Right, let's see if we get to this view of this stained glass window. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment, guys. I don't see any stained glass window here. I, all I can see is clear glass there. But this, there was supposed to be a stained glass window here that was um, designed by a C.E. Kemp. Just look at this stonework, guys. The amount of hours this would have taken just to build this stone structure here to go across there. See, this building to the right in there is obviously a newer... Um, build to the actual yard here wow the view from up there must be really intense I'm assuming that net in there is to stop pigeons getting into there in recent years the St. Augustus Church has had many changes to it from the installation of new lighting and central heating system Today, the church remains a focal point for the local Christian congregation and for the wider community. Unfortunately, guys, this church is shut, so I would have loved to have shown you inside in all the decor and all the details and stuff. But there's supposed to be a wooden plaque with all 40 members of the vicars of this parish, right? Starting with Henry de Burton in 1276. Inside the gallery, the pews still bear the names of the Rougie families that used them. I find this area absolutely peaceful, relaxing, and just look how open planned it is. Maybe that was the reason why they designed this area like this, because they wanted people to come here, relax, and maybe reflect upon their choices of, you know, in their life, etc. I think it's time for a coffee and it's time just to relax, chill, and this area, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Cheers.
All right, guys, now we've had that nice refreshing coffee break, we are now going to look on the grounds of this churchyard and see if we can find anything interesting. Thought we'd start on this, this wall here on the east side of the yard. They've got a gate that just stops there. Hmm. Very intriguing. I wonder. All right, guys, if you look at the map now, where we're stood, we're on the X, and where that gate is, is at the circle, right? This grounds used to be a part of the vicarage, um, must have been premises. And also, if you look here, we've got a wall that goes around there that must keep the same boundary line, and it shoots off straight down to that section down there. What, what's this here? That looks like some grave there. Wait a second, these are... Oh my god, these are all gravestones here. Go along here. All these are gravestones. And here we have a load more gravestones. So, did they bury all the people on the edge of this graveyard? Or churchyard, I should say. Here we go, we've got... One in the ground just there. Funny looking tree. Wow, look at that tree, guys. We've got some more gravestones there. And they just keep going. We are now on the west side of this churchyard. They look really impressive, these do. Really detailed on the um, font. There's some more there. And as I said, they seem to be going on the edge of the wall. I really want to have a look at all these tombs, so I thought we'd start over that direction and we make our way around here. Alright, this is our first one to look at. What we got here? Oh, we can still read it. What we got here? John Parson Cook. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. This, this guy here is one of the famous people and this guy is famous because, if I remember rightly, he's the guy that got poisoned by Dr. William Palmer. Well, at least we found one of them. Right, guys, let's uh, let's see if we can find the other one then. All right, we're making our way to the south side of the church, and we find wow! Look at that one there. Look at the detail work on this tomb. That's incredible, and that crikey. 1835. What's this? Is this a no? Actually, it's another tomb here, but it's, for some reason it's barricaded up by wood. Wow, same design as the other one over there, kinda, but this one's got no writing on it at all. Wow, all right, what we got over here? See, that's horrible, you know, it's all destroyed. That's nice, I like that one there. Nice little design of one there. Nice little... I don't know if that was a pillar or a monument of sorts. I'm not too sure of the purpose of that one. I don't see any writing on it. Now that's beautiful, that's the only one I've actually seen with um, flowers. Absolutely amazing. Whoa, hang on. This is the second famous one I was on about. Christina Collins. Yeah, hang on. This this lady, unfortunately, she uh, she died. Um, she she got murdered on the uh, the Trent and Mersey Canal by uh, boatmen. She was 37 years old. Crikey! But still, it's beautiful that somebody's left flowers. Wow! Just look at the detail on that tomb there. And it looks like it had like metal pipes going around it. 
or not a pipe, like a, um, a fence, a metal fence that used to go around that one. Wonder why that was. I like the fancy top of it. That's beautiful, I like that design. Huh. And let's make our way back to the uh, church. I would have loved to have been able to get inside this church and show you what it looks like on the inside but as I said it's already locked up so I can't get in. So unfortunately this is where I'm going to have to love and leave you for this video. I would like to say thank you guys for coming back and always remember to do your best to stay positive and screw all those negatives. And I will see you guys on my next one. Alright, bye bye.